Well, welcome to High School Sports on the Hartford Cable Network. I'm Don Morrison. Tonight at North Hartford High School, it's the North Hartford Hawks taking on the Seamelt and Wright Mustangs in a field hockey game with me, Rebecca Smith. Rebecca, you're a happy, happy coach right now because the JV coach, you win the game two to nothing and then you climb these steps. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes. What did you like think of the JV game? Was that fun? It was a lot of fun. We were playing down tonight, so we went in with uh, some worries that our girls weren't going to be able to push through and they did a wonderful job playing so so many men down on the field. So I am so proud of my girls. Well, tonight is senior night, and it's always fun. And it's bittersweet. It's uh, it's emotional. As a coach, uh, I, I talk to a lot of coaches who say senior night, nah, I'm not really a fan of it because it's hard to get your players focused. It is hard for them to focus, but I will tell you, being a, a former player, being a parent of these players, and being a coach, the hype that goes on with these girls to be out there on senior night, it's like no other. They are hyped all day long in school, and there's a lot of emotions involved, but they play with their heart that entire game. Well, it is the last game of the season in terms of being at home. They have yes. one more game, or away game, We're talking about North Harford. These two teams coming in fairly similar, North Harford five and seven, but three and one in the Chesapeake. Uh, C. Milton Wright, a six-game winning streak they're coming in on. They are now 5-0 in the division, 7-2 and two overall. A lot of common opponents, so if you look at the scores, you know, both of them uh, have defeated Patterson Mill handily. Uh, both have won against Northeast. Now, the only game that sort of stands out is North Hartford lost to Bel Air 3 nothing, whereas C. Milton Wright mm -hmm. defeated Bel Air in overtime. Yes. So if you can use comparative scores, you would say C. Milton is a team that should be the team favored coming in. You would think. Um, we also, I know as North Hartford played Bel Air early on in the season, yep. where C. Milton Wright, they just played them, I believe, last week. Yep. So, you know, we also um, have a very young team. Um, even though we do have 10 seniors, most of our starters are sophomores and juniors. Yep. So, you know, and losing out on that season for both teams, you know, it's 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 been hard for them. but. You know, I really think they're they're a very equal opportunity um, game here tonight for both of them. That it, it could go either way. You're watching the C. Milton Wright team being introduced. Number four, Cece uh, Durboro, the senior forward. Number nine is Erin Cowie. She's a senior forward. Fifteen, Claire Burrows, a sophomore. Twenty-four, Kaylee Core. Uh, she is a senior midfielder. Olivia Levy, a senior a midfielder. Number six. Number seven is Colleen Ashwell, a senior also a midfielder. Winslow DePeso, we'll talk about her. Three goals and 10 assists. Wow. The sophomore at number 19. 12, Riley Cushman, a junior defender. 18 is Karis May, a junior defender. 34, Sarah Durborough, a sophomore defender. And Rebecca, this, this, this freshman goalie, number 26, Phoebe Henderson, five shutouts on the year. You talk about a freshman coming in to play that, goalie. That's amazing. That is absolutely amazing. Allowed five goals in the entire season. That, so. that's, I have not seen her play. That makes me excited to watch her play tonight. Absolutely. Now you're watching the North Harford team being introduced. Number two, Emma Moffitt, a senior forward. 11, Jackie Boltman, a senior forward. 21, Ava Lewis, a senior forward. 25, Jamie Cavanaugh, also a senior forward. We should say, of course, all seniors starting tonight. 10 seniors, nine seniors, and one junior. Annika Peterson, a senior number eight midfielder. Allison Stewart, number 10, a senior midfielder. Anna Kryzak, or Kryzak, excuse Krizak, me. Yeah. Yep, she's starting as well. She's a midfielder, number 12. Autumn Taglia Ferry, a junior defender. Number nine is Greer Strine, a senior defender. Sarah Hardiman, a senior defender, number six. And the goalie, Emma, Emma, and I'll say her name correctly because you corrected me, Kuchera. Kuchera. I wanted yeah. to say it differently, Emma <laughs> Kuchera. 33 saves on the air, a senior goalie, and that's exact, uh, Rebecca, where you expect to see your leadership. Yes, yes. She has, um, our, uh, Kuchera has actually led us out of some tough spots over the years. Um, when some of our, when she was uh, underclassmen, I should say. So she got pulled up her 10th grade year to varsity to play for um, Carla and Patty. So, you know, she has done some uh, hard work over the years. And we talk about, folks have to remember that this uh, is their first year playing for two years since last year, COVID it out, nobody played at all. Yes. So your sophomores who are now seniors missed their entire junior year. Yes. Had to be a difficult thing for them. It is, uh, you know, I know some people are like, at least they're getting their senior year, but you know, these girls, uh, across the board 
and actually any sport, these kids missed a whole year. I mm -hmm. mean, it makes quite a difference. We're talking about the coaches, Carla Harward. Now, Carla has a connection with C. Milton Wright, having coached at C. Milton Wright as a head coach from, uh, what, 97 through 04, came over here in 04 as assistant coach, has been the head coach since 2009. So she, I'm sure, is now a hawk through and through. Yes. But she has a connection with C. Milton Wright going back. She does. The assistant coach is Patty Murray uh, and Patty Webb, and Kerry Webb, the assistant coaches for North Harford. And now to honor our country, here is our national anthem. Meantime, for uh, C. Milton Wright, their head coach, uh, Kelsey Lovelace. Kelsey works at Aberdeen Proving Ground. She's going to get her master's degree in cybersecurity. So uh, wow. she's a veteran uh, field hockey coach, having coached at a couple of Division II college uh, places, uh, had done very well there. Also played uh, college uh, at, at Mercyhurst. Uh, so she is really an experienced uh, coach, not a teacher like uh, Ms. Harvard, who is, of course, an English teacher here, veteran teacher. So. That creates a little bit of a different dynamic. You see the kids all day long as a teacher. Exactly. Uh, you know as a non-teacher yourself, mm -hmm. it, it makes a little bit of a different thing where you're seeing girls coming out, not from the classroom, but just on the field. field. It definitely makes a difference. So it should be a very interesting game tonight. 15 minute periods, four 15 minute periods. Uh, uh, we should see some great hockey. The temperature probably in the high 50s, a little bit humid out there. Just a little. So I know you were telling me about uh, the, how your players were getting gassed a little bit. One in particular who had some cramps going on. Yes, you know, playing down earlier, I, she just was not hydrated enough, unfortunately, to be running that much during the game, you know. They, we stress it to them, but they're also teenagers. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, North Harford dressed in the white tops. Uh, they're the home team, of course. See Milton Wright dressed in the black with the silver numerals. Uh, getting ready to take the field here. Again, should be a very interesting game, a very tough Chesapeake Division game. You're looking at C. Milton Wright undefeated. They'd love to have that undefeated record uh, going in. I guess they have probably one more game as well. Yes. North Hartford, of course, at 3-1. and one. What a great victory it would be for them to knock off C. C. Milton Wright. Wright, and they would end up being tied for the lead in the county. Yes. Both these teams having defeated Falston very uh, not too long ago, uh, I think uh, what North Harper did two games ago. Yes, we played them last Monday, the uh, October 4th. Lost to Delaney coming in. So as we said, C. Milton Wright on that six game winning streak coming in. They going from right to left across your TV screen. North Harper from left to right. We're just underway here. As we said, 15 minute periods. We'll try to keep you up to date on who has the ball and Rebecca Smith is going to tell us what's going on, the sock, the field hockey expert. <laughs> right now, it's it's North Harford's ball. Actually, no, she gave it to uh, C. Milton. It looked like it had gone out on C. Milton, but she obviously saw a foul that I did not to allow uh, C. Milton to have that ball. On the attack right away, on right in right front of the goal. Right on the attack, yep. This is not where you want to be early not on. Not where we want to be. But that... And, and there's a the goal. And the goal. Wow. At 14-15, just, uh, what, uh, 50 Four, seconds. Yes, into the, into the, into uh, the first game. quarter. And there's the first goal. If you're C. Milton Wright, it couldn't start any better. If you're North Harford, Harford couldn't start any worse. worse. Unfortunately. So at 14-15, I didn't see who got the goal. Here comes a replay. Let's see if we can see. There's a sort of passel there in front. Ball kicked around. 
Looks like number 15. Yeah, it is. Number 15 making the goal. And uh, the 15, let's see, that is Claire Burroughs. Claire had five goals coming in, scores that goal. The first goal at 14-15 of that first period. We have Hannah Krizak taking the ball up to Jackie Baltman. They were got nice transferring there. But that's what you want to see. You have a goal scored against you. You want to come right back, back. and take the offense. Exactly. What happened on that goal exactly, Rebecca? Well, it just looked like, unfortunately, we put one one defender against two attackmen right back there, you know? When you're playing man down like that, it's hard to for one person to see what all is going on. And, and they had chances to clear the, uh, the, the net there, but wasn't able to do it. Mm -hmm. Had a little interference going on there, but I think we corrected that. North Hartford on the attack. Looking to try to even this score down one nothing. We're just early in the first period. And that will be North Hartford's ball. Because she uh, hit it. It, it went into uh, Seamount Wright's feet, that yep. one player. Anytime that it goes off of uh, the feet, it is automatically um, a foul. Inside the circle, that would have been a corner. That's Greer Strine. Uh, check it. No, it's uh, no. That's. Yeah, it's, uh, that is now. Let's see. That was a nice interception. Yes. Trying to see that number, and I it's think that is see. that is Greer who has the ball now across the field there. That interception made by C. Milton Wright. All right. Sometimes when they have ponytails covering their number, that's not fair. No. We should not do that. And Here to be truthful with you, these white uniforms with gold lettering is not the easiest to read at nighttime on this field. <laughs> Mustangs on the attack again. Already up one nothing as you see. Smart have a nice speed there. Well, right in front of the net. And the idea here, Rebecca, you want to clear it out as fast you, as you can? You want to clear it out as fast as you can, and you always want to clear it off to the sides anytime that you can because clearing the ball out in front of the goal just gives the opponent more opportunity to try to score. So as a defender, you always want to try to take the ball out wide mm -hmm. and then bring it up the sides of your field. Which is sort of what happened on that first goal. They tried to clear it, but they just sort of banged it around, around. and left it right in the front. Yes. That was Winslow DePeso, the young lady number 19 for C. Milton Wright. 10 assists on the year. You know, that is just unbelievable to have that many assists. That is a lot of assist. Yeah, she has also has three goals. Just a sophomore as well. Is that Boltman with the ball? That is Boltman with the ball. Second year player. Yes. President well. of the National Honor Society. You know, that's pretty pretty, uh, pretty cool. Member of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Yes. You know, a lot of these girls, they do amazing things on and off the field, which, you know, as a mom and as a coach, I love to watch. Absolutely. We talk about athletes and who play and do more than just play sports. And sports teaches you a lot of lessons. It does. Time management is, is one of the best things it can teach. And, you know, it also teaches those bonds of friendship. And But it just, these girls stay focused. And it allows them to have that focus. North Hartford with the ball. You hear the crowd. We have a decent crowd here on a nice, uh, uh, this is, what is this? This is a Wednesday night. Wednesday evening, I yes. lose track of days here sometimes. Now North Hartford has just been awarded a corner. Talk about a corner. What's that all about, Rebecca? The corner is the perfect opportunity to score. Um, anytime um, a foul happens inside the 16, which is the red outer um, circle there, the uh, if it's a defensive foul, it is a corner awarded to the offense. The ball has to be inserted. It comes outside of the 16 and immediately goes back inside the 16 because it has to be inside that 16 in order for any type of shot to matter. So um, as a defender, though, they're trying to get that ball out as quick as they can. And notice there are only four defenders allowed in that circle. Only four defenders along with the goalie. Mm -hmm. um, when you have that, you usually, uh, there's different positions of the defenders. You have somebody that's called a flyer. The flyer is the person that leads with their stick and goes after the ball as it's inserted. Um, that p position requires somebody that's fast on their feet and not afraid for that ball or the stick to be coming right at them. So, you know, these girls, they practice these all day long. So um, 
Rebecca, that ball went high, and that is a penalty. That, that is uh, a penalty. Um, the, the key to field hockey when thinking about things is when anytime you're taking a free hit or any type of hit, you want to keep the ball below the knee, or if they do what's an aerial, which is an air ball, it needs to be above the head, and it actually has to land in a position where um, there's nobody. You, it's an intended target within five yards. It's just a safety issue, but um, yeah. So anything between the knee and the head is a no-no. Anything below the knee is usually good. It was hard for the attack. They're really, they've dominated possession of the ball. They just haven't had any position to score. score. Here come the Hawks. Retrieving the ball just about at the 30-yard uh, line. Field 100 yards uh, long, sort of like a football field. You notice, I guess it is the, what, the uh, blue line it completely around? It is the blue around. line, yes, and it's 60 feet wide. So many lines, of course, because <laughs> this is a multi-purpose field. They play lacrosse and they play field hockey and soccer and football on it, so sometimes the lines get a bit confusing. Very much so, and unfortunately, the, at different fields, the lines can mean different things. They're all in different colors, so it all depends on what school you're at. <laughs> so it helps being the home team, knowing the lines. Lines, exactly. Here come the Mustangs. That's Aaron Cowley, number nine, who had the ball a moment ago. Aaron, a senior, 4.4 GPA, National Honor Society. Belongs to SAD, that's a great, great group. It's SAD, but it means Students Against Destructive Decisions, and they do a lot of good work in terms of anti-drug and anti-just making wrong decisions. Yes, that they do. Headed for Clemson or South Carolina next year. Oh, wow. Year. Come the Hawks looking to try to get even, down one nothing. That first goal scored at 14-15, just a, what's that, 50 seconds or 40, 40 seconds into the game. Out of bounds it goes, now what's the call there? Now that is a long hit. That means that the um, ball was actually taken out of bounds by C. Milton Wright, since the ball has been awarded to North Hartford as a long hit. So the ball now will come up to the 25, and um, it, it's just designed because we actually had advantage of the ball down there, but it was hit out by C. Milton, that they're going to bring it back to the 25 to try to keep some kind of advantage for us. Okay. The us being North Hartford, of uh, course. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, Rebecca, don't worry. About <laughs> you have to understand Rebecca has a rooting interest being the JV co-coach here, so if uh, she does a little bit of coaching from the booth here, you'll and, have to And understand. I also played here. I was a North Hartford graduate myself. Wow. And played for the like, Hawks. Uh, like 10 years ago or something? I wish. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, once a Hawk, always, always a Hawk. Always a Hawk, yeah. yes, yeah. sir. <laughs> That's a great thing about this community is people come and they live here and they stay here their entire lives and their kids stay here and their grandparents are here. So it is a very, uh, That's you know, how my family community. is. My mother also was a graduate of North Hartford. How about that? <laughs> we don't go very far. <laughs> We were talking about uh, Mr. Pyle, the principal back in the early 50s and opened, I guess, the new school in 1951 here. Mm -hmm. I say new school because I can remember it when it, was, when it opened. <laughs> but you know how old I am. <laughs> and of course, the school that was redone about, what, uh, 10 years ago? Uh, 90, it was actually in the 90s, um, I want to say. Well, maybe it was in the 2000s. Yeah. I could be wrong. I think Aberdeen was first at 03. And I it think was, yes. North Hartford was like maybe 05 or something. They chose to keep the skin of the old building, which is interesting. Yes. And there's, there is several Here wings. Here comes North Hartford with the ball. Chance for a goal. Yes, it is. No, um, it hits off the pipe, off the goalie, and then off the pipe. It's going to be a corner, though. Now, that corner is awarded because the goalie actually intentionally hit it out of bounds. So... That becomes a corner. Well, that was, in a, was that Annika Peterson with the ball in the break? It was actually um, Jamie. Um, Jamie Fortune or Kendall Fortune? I'm sorry. Um, Catavan. Oh, Catavan. Uh, yeah. Yeah. She actually is the one who had the ball. I'm sorry. I coached most of these girls, so I know them by first yeah. name a lot of times. <laughs> Jamie Cavanaugh, number 25. Cavanaugh, yeah. Looked like she had a chance at the goal. Uh, and just couldn't and get it she converted. did, and it was just the goalie deflected it. The goalie did a good job on that. Yep. The goalie being uh, the uh, freshman, Phoebe Henderson. We talked about her with five shutouts this year, allowed only six goals all season long as a freshman. That, that's amazing. Basketball, lacrosse player as well, uh, coming up in the next two seasons. 
You think about that, the rest of the league has to worry about her for three more years. Three more years. <laughs> That's tough. Uh, maybe she'd like to transfer. Maybe you could talk <laughs> her into transfer. Uh, to remind in North Hartford, their attendance areas do uh, touch. Yes, they do. Which is interesting. Of course, North Hartford and Falston being the big rivals. Very big rivals. <laughs> and that uh, one nothing win that uh, North Hartford had against Falston, that had to be a biggie. Yes, it was. That was on the Falston field, I believe. It was on the Falston field, and they scored. I mean, it was 0-0 zero to zero pretty tight the entire game up until the end. And North Hartford was able to go ahead and get that, that score off and got that goal in there. About three minutes and 30 seconds left in the first period, 15-minute periods. And that's new this year. It actually used to be 30-minute um, halves. Yeah. And uh, they changed it this year to 15-minute quarters. However, uh, coaches cannot call timeouts now hmm. because they get two minutes in between each quarter to have that timeout period with the uh, players. Rebecca, was there a reason they went to quarters rather than halves? It, it's, I'm really not sure exactly why they did it. It's across the board um, why they decided to do it. Um, I believe it was just to help a lot of times with the flow of the game. Mm -hmm. That's Allison Stewart, number 10, triggering the ball in. Nice transfer across the field. You're speaking of transfers, so you move from one side to the other? Yes. In field hockey, normally you want to play the ball down the sides of the field, like I was telling you before, how the defense wants to clear it out to the side. You want to play it down the sides of the field, but sometimes the you can't always play it on the same side. So you have to transfer it across that middle of the field to get it where you need to get it to the best positioning for yourself. North Harford on the attack, right at the 50 yard line, as you can see. Yes. That's Boltman, Jackie Boltman. Second year player, international business entrepreneur, president of the National Honor Society and co-president of the FBLA. It's a busy young lady. She is a very busy young lady. Time winding down now inside two minutes of the first period. Take away by Emma, Emma Moffitt. Now that's actually Annika. That was on, that was number eight. Oh. Okay, Annika Peterson. Uh, Annika Pe Peterson had that ball. She is actually a, f um, this is, she started on varsity as a freshman. Her and actually Emma Moffitt, both of them were um, pulled up to varsity their freshman year. Would have been four-year players, except missing that year last year to COVID. Yes, Don. Annika is an art major. She, uh, one of her art books was chosen to hang in the state house down in uh, in Maryland, in Annapolis. That's amazing. Yep. So nice to see these girls doing so much off the field. Yeah, absolutely. You notice that the athletes, sometimes athletes get the, uh, you know, the image of being only in athletics, but uh, you find that the average athlete is a, a well-rounded person as a well. Very well-rounded. Here comes North Harford looking to try to get something together. We're now inside one minute left in the first period. Hawks at five and seven, the Seamill to right Mustangs at seven and two. Record's a bit deceiving because the losses for North Hartford have been against out-of-county teams and very strong out-of-county teams. Very strong. One of our first losses was to Hereford, yeah. which always is a dominant team. The Bulls from northern Baltimore County. Yes, sir. I guess that and uh, Kinderdale in uh, York in, in NPA, some of the big rivals that North Hartford has had over the years. Mm -hmm. Fourteen seconds and counting left in the first period. That goal scored before the fans had a chance to settle into their seats. <laughs> you know, I didn't hear as much cheering as you normally would, and yeah. it's probably because some of them were not seated yet. Yeah. <laughs> and that is the end of the first period. That 15-minute cycle is now gone as North Hartford, I think, did a nice job, Rebecca, recovering from not letting that goal get them down. Exactly. They actually kept the ball in, in their possession most of this quarter, which yeah. is nice to see, especially after s having them score right off the bat. And they had that one excellent opportunity for a goal just to hit off the goalie, then off the uh, pipe, and then out of bounds. They, um, they, they're, working, they're working hard out there. Both teams are. You can see the coaches now talking to the players. Kind of, again, as we said, a warm night, uh, not warm temperature-wise, but warm humidity-wise. Mm -hmm. have to keep uh, hydrated. 
Here you can see uh, Kelsey Lovelace talking to her team. Always nice to see the kids very intent on what the coach is saying. You as a coach, I know you like that. Oh, yeah. Pay attention to me. Pay attention. Oh, yeah. Sometimes they don't, well, but... Uh, the mind wanders. It does wander. Again, this is senior night here at North Hartford. I think that emotion is sort of out the window now. They had before the game uh, walked on with their parents and little brothers and little sisters and uh, had the final say, the final goodbye here at home. Final time they'll come on this field as a North Hartford Hawk. And that's very emotional time. <laughs> senior year, it's, it, even though we're in the fall of it, it seems like once your senior night happens with your fall sport, the senior year just starts to fly by at that point. That's Carla Harvard you saw there high-fiving her team. What an excellent coach and a very enthusiastic coach. Great teacher, great English teacher for all these years. And, you know, she's been coaching a, a while. Yes. Again, go back to see Milton Wright uh, starting back in the early 90s. Yes. And then we have Patty Murdy, who is also a teacher here at the school. She, um, she has coached for several years. Actually, Patty and I used to coach outside of the school and did rec league together with our our daughters. So I've been coaching with Patty for a few years now, and then Patty and Carrie Webb, they were a new addition to the coaching staff about four years ago. They are a husband and wife tag team who brings so much to this program. Yep. Waiting for the Mustangs to come back on the field. North Harvard is on the field again, going from left to right. See Milton Wright in those black uniforms with the silver numerals. I guess they're black or is it just really dark blue? I believe it is more of a navy. Kind of looks black to it me. It does <laughs> up here because I'm telling you, it's hard to see. The lights might be on, but <laughs> it's hard which to see. Is, up which here is sometimes. unbelievable because their colors are light blue. We called it Carolina blue. blue. They now call it Mustang blue. But uh, I think, uh, I don't know, maybe we'll just go with, with navy blue. We'll, we'll, we'll do that. <laughs> Here come the Hawks now again, looking to try to get even down one nothing. Hockey being a low scoring game normally. Hockey is a low scoring game. Anytime that you see a high scoring game, unfortunately, it's usually a teams against teams that don't have the skill level. Yeah, I was surprised at the nine nothing score against Patterson Mill, your win and five nothing C. Milton winning. Patterson Mill normally has a pretty good program. Patterson Mill does, um, their head coach, Shannon, um, she stepped down um, right before COVID after the birth of her fourth child. Mm -hmm. And her mother, Pat Troyer, who has been known in the field hockey community for years, who was also helping there, who helps out with her children, also stepped down. So it was uh, trying to find new coaches. And unfortunately, you know, just like most teams with COVID, they lost a lot of players. Yeah. Well, that shows how important uh, coaching uh, consistency is you see good programs it's normally like you go back to Alice Puckett of Falston oh, yes, you know, for so many years Alice Puckett was the coach at Falston they won what 13 state titles during her time yes. there she actually has coached several um, of these girls at camps mm -hmm. I'm sure even across Del Seamont Wright that she is very well known in the field hockey community because even after she left um, Falston she went to John Carroll yeah the Hopkins family now uh, owning the brewery there in the central part of the county. Yes, having much success with that. Yep. She switched gears a little bit on us. <laughs> and of course her husband, Mark Puckett, a baseball man, and Mark and I uh, coached against one another for years and, and just an excellent family. And their daughter, Lindsay, who went to Maryland, I believe, and played uh, field hockey there. Well, here we are, North Harvard looking to try to get even. Just inside 13 minutes now left in the half. Been a very evenly played game, don't you think, Rebecca? Very evenly played. Smilton Wright is doing nice transferring with the job with their stick work right now, trying to keep North Harford off of it. And that was a nice save. And you notice that the ball, you have to hit the ball with the in, with the inside of your stick. Yes, it has to be hit with the flat part of your stick. We yeah. do reverses where it actually comes in on the inner Rebecca, part of your stick. Let me interrupt you there. You saw that that loft of the ball. That is the aerial I was talking about mm -hmm. earlier. She saw that they had built, Seamount Wright had built what I call a wall. 
And sometimes you can't get a hit through that, so you want to change it up a little bit. And that's, that's a fairly new rule. They didn't used to allow that. Well, back in the day, they were called scoops. Uh -huh. um, they were done a little bit differently, and your intended targets were a little bit differently. Here's this 25-yard um, hit you were talking about yes. before. And any time the ball is from the 25M, it has to travel five yards before it can actually enter into that 16. So um, that is actually a, a newer rule that's happened in about the past three years. So some of the girls are still trying to get accustomed to that. And Rebecca, they have really sped up the game. Uh, it used to be that when the official blew the whistle, there was like a delay. It was. Now they just sort of motion the other way and the team takes it and yes, they're off and going. It's very much a self-start sport anymore mm -hmm. and it just does keep the momentum going. And they even, uh, refs over the years have tried to stop blowing the whistle so much for all these foot calls and yeah. everything that we see. And players, as they have matured in the sport, know, like, if it hits your foot, just back off of it, let the other team take possession of it, so the whistle's not blowing all the time. Right. Looks like we're getting another corner here called against Seamount Wright for North Harford. Yeah, North so. Harford has had the only corners so far. And again, as you said, Rebecca, excellent opportunity to score. Score. Notice the four defenders plus the goalie. And uh, you said they can have as many offensive players as they want around that circle. Circle. I would not always suggest that because um, putting everybody up there unless it's a time where we only have a couple seconds or minutes left on the clock. But, you know, they can put as many as they want up there. The whole point of a corner is to try to score. North Harper with the ball in that scoring position. They're just trying to center it to get a shot on goal. Yes. But Seamilton takes Seamilton it away. Seamilton Wright does take it away. Yep. And we got Annika back with a block. Takes the ball back for North Harford. Annika Peterson, one of the seniors on this team, senior night. Two goals and assist on the year, indoor track star. Voices of equity, I'm not familiar with that. There must be some kind of a um, social type program in program the school. Program here at the school. I am not familiar with it either, Don. Yep. Sounds good. It yes. sounds like <laughs> it, they're trying to do good for each other. The Best Buddies program, which some of these young ladies are involved with as well, where the kids from the regular program help out the kids from the special needs, needs program. program. Which is a wonderful program, because those, those kids with special needs really look up to these these kids and it's a wonderful program to mentor them. And the name Best Buddies is exactly what it is. You're their best buddy. You look out for them. Yes, you do. Yeah, at lunchtime when uh, you know you're maybe by yourself, you sit with them at the table. It's just a wonderful program. Another corner coming up. North Harvard, I think this may be their fourth corner. No success yet. Not none yet. Hopefully we can make a difference here at, at this They're point. They're standing outside that sixteen yard circle. The ball has to come all the way out. Yes. Here's a perfect opportunity. Unfortunately, though, the foul happened against North Harford, so Seaman right now gets the ball to bring it back out. Mustangs doing a good job of uh, defending against yes, that. Yes, they are. Here come the Mustangs now on the move. We're carrying that ball while watching where you're going. That has to be tough. It is very tough. You know, um, you have to get to a point that you have to look up. The most important thing is to always try to keep that ball out in front of you. If you keep the ball out in front of you, it's easier to look up the field and see exactly where your placement it's is. It's almost like dribbling with a basketball and uh, watching where you're passing the ball, but being able to control, control that dribble. Control the ball, exactly. Here come the Mustangs now on the attack. We saw this happen in that first minute of play where they didn't get the ball cleared, North Harford we're talking about. And caused the end, ended yeah. up with scoring. But here comes now, uh, Seamount Wright's first offensive corner. That first goal scored by Burroughs in that first minute of play, Cara, Claire Burroughs. The sophomore who scored her sixth goal of the year at 14-15 left in the first period. Now you see the situation reversed. North Harper with the four defenders and the goalie. Looks like Seamilton Wright's gonna put maybe what, five, six players around that circle? Yeah, they're not keeping many back. Again, the ball has to come outside the circle. Come all the way out and then back inside. They're doing nice transferring there. Right out in front of the net. Out of bounds it goes. So this is now another 
And this is going to be a long hit for Seamount Wright. Long hit from the 25-yard line. It went out of bounds off North Hartford. Off of North Hartford. So uh, with that, it gets rewarded right back to Seamilton. And now we have another corner. Their second corner. Notice the North Hartford defenders going back. Now they'll rush the net when the, the ball comes outside that circle. Yes. It, once you have the four defenders in the goal with your goalie, all the other players have to be behind that 50-yard line mm -hmm. until the ball is actually inserted in. Once the ball is inserted in, then the other uh, defenders and even attackmen of North Harford can rush yeah. to the circle. Open. Centers the ball, it's out in front of the net. Nice job by North Harford to defend that. That is Annika over there defending. Annika Peterson, uh, the senior. I can always tell her run. <laughs> How is that? She is very fast and she just, the way she, her stance when she plays the ball, she's very um, low centered, which is what you need to keep the ball out in front of you. So when she runs, you can, you can tell it's Annika. <laughs> What was that call? It looked like it was a um, obstruction on uh -huh. Seamount right, so the ball was coming out. Obstruction meaning that your body is between your opponent and the ball? Yes. Sometimes you can also have stick obstructions where you're going in and you actually play the ball on the wrong side of the stick or you've reached in with the wrong side of the stick. It's been a rapidly moving second period. We're down to the five minute mark. Still just had one goal that scored at uh, inside the first minute of play. Yes, which a low scoring game is just, that shows you that these two opponents are very equally matched. Yeah. Phoebe Henderson, the goalie for C. Milton Wright has done a nice job as Emma Kuchera has done the same thing for North Harper. Mid-October day and it's kind of warm for mid-October. Warm and humid. Very, for October. But I will not complain because no. normally it's very cold during field hockey season about this time, so. Yeah. Being a old baseball coach in high school, we uh, start on March the 1st and, you know, our first job was to clear the snow off the parking lot oh. so we could use rubber baseballs to practice baseball. It's always been a, a uh, thought of mine that baseball should be a fall sport in um, Maryland because that's when the good weather is. Oh, yes. It doesn't get warm until May, and no. the season is just about over. Well, that's um, both my daughters also play lacrosse, and it's the same situation. Yeah. Always, you always think lacrosse is a warm sport, but it starts in a cold season. But lacrosse, you know, you can play it in the cold season. Baseball, you just don't want to hit that ball no, when you your don't. hands are sore. No, not with a metal bat. No, it's like <laughs> bees in your hands. Yes. Out inside, three and a half minutes now left in the half. See Milton right on the attack. Good job by North Harper to intercept. There's an example you said, uh, Rebecca, where they just blow the whistle, North Harper keeps possession. Yes, that Their actually hit lost. off of the one of the feet of Sea Milton as she was trying to defend it. So as long as they know, the only time the refs sometimes will go ahead and blow that whistle if the player does not back off the ball and try to keep playing it. That number seven, by the way, Kendall Fortune, who didn't start the game. Kendall is the leading scorer for North Hartford, but not being a senior, they started 10 of the 11 players were seniors. Yes. Kendall is also another player that made the varsity squad her freshman year. Oh. She is an amazing player. She's an amazing athlete all the way around, and she's a good student. She, her parents have a lot to be proud of. Oh, yeah. All these girls do. Coming up on the two minute and 30 second mark in the half. Coming to you from North Hartford High School. It's the North Hartford Hawks hosting the C. Milton Wright Mustangs. Chesapeake Division field hockey. North Hartford uh, coming in at five and seven, three and one in the league. C. Milton Wright is five and zero oh in the division, seven and two overall. C. Milton Wright's losses first uh, of the year. They lost two to one in overtime to John Carroll and then lost to Century three to one. So they were one and two to start the year 
And since that point, they've ripped off those six wins in a row. Which is absolutely amazing. It is. Fans are very enthusiastic here. Very. Ball out front of the net. That's a good uh, move to get it outside. Yes. Once again, you can see where they take the ball out on the sides. And unfortunately, there that will be out on North Hartford. Kaylee Mohaus in there, number 15 into the ball game as well. Again, now some of the underclassmen are coming in, Kelly a junior. And that's one of the uh, predicaments a coach has where she wants to play her seniors as long as she can, but then you've got to get your regulars in there at some you point, do. even though it's senior night. It's senior night, and these girls, with losing last season, you want to give them something. Some of them are starters right. normally, but, um, you know, senior night's a special night for these it girls. Is that. Yep. And again, the last night they will be on this field, and when you get to be old like me, you'll remember that last game with all your teammates. Oh, yes. What's the call there, Rebecca? It was uh, obstruction on Mulhausen in there. Which is one of the common calls. It is one of the common calls. And a lot of times you can hear it with um, this. You'll hear the slapping of the sticks. Um, that is usually because somebody is swinging a stick um, and not hitting contact with the ball. <laughs> it's usually better to attack the ball, keep the stick on the ground, and attack the ball down low so you avoid having that collision of sticks. The ball, a very heavy ball. Yeah, the idea is it's supposed to roll, not bounce. Yes. It's a very uh, it's a very heavy ball, very solid ball. It is not a ball you really want to get hit with. Tell me about it. <laughs> and yes. that is the end of the half here with a one nothing score as uh, C. Milton Wright scored that goal back with 14-15 to go in the first period. We had just barely settled into our seats when the goal was scored by Clara Burroughs. That's all the scoring we've had for the first half. Rebecca, a well-played first half, an evenly played first half. Both there teams had chances to score beyond that one goal. Yes, they did. Unfortunately, you know, North Hartford was not being able to capitalize on all those corners they were receiving at the first uh, half of the game. Maybe that'll change here in the second half. Well, we'll catch our breath as the two teams will reverse course and they'll go the opposite directions yes. for the second half. Stay tuned as we come back with the second half of this game from North Harvard. It's C. Milton Wright leading the Hawks by one nothing. Well, we're back with you at North Harvard High School. As you can see, one nothing. Well, not on your on your screen right now, but we can tell you it is one nothing. The only goal of the game scored uh, in the first minute of play. That by Claire Burrows. Uh, on a loose ball, Rebecca, right out in front of the net. And right out oftentimes you see that happening. As you said, you've got to clear that rascal outside the circle. Outside the circle. And unfortunately, they fed it right back in. And you only had one defender in there against two attackmen. Yeah. By the way, we do want to correct my mistake. It's Ellie Kuchera is the goalie for uh, North Harper, not Emma Kuchera. Sorry about that, Ellie. Um, but uh, she has done a nice job as well. Been under pressure from time to time. Yes, and it actually looks like they just changed the goalie up. We have uh, Sarah Reitschneider in there now, who is a sophomore. This is her first year on varsity here since they didn't have a season last year. But so they share a, a Kuchera and Weiss Snyder. And then we share. also have Riley Holstrom, who is also in goal sometimes mm -hmm. for us. All right, so we're starting the second half. And again, they will reverse themselves and see Milton Wright going from left to right. The young ladies in the dark uniforms, either black or navy blue. blue. We yes. haven't decided. Uh, we do the, the North Harford is in the white with the green and the gold trim. So set to go now for our last 30 minutes, 15 minute quarters. Of course, the guys in the booth, they really like to hear the word overtime. Time. We, could, <laughs> we could have that. Yeah. Never know. Never know. We've got 30 more minutes to play of this game. You never yep. know what will happen in that 30 minutes. It's been a very competitive game, just like we knew it would be based on these two teams, their records and their competitive nature. And it seems like we always seem to play, North Harford always seems to play Seamount right for senior night. It has been that way for a few years now. Oh, that's unusual, isn't it? Mm, it is. Grace Conklin, by the way, number five for North Harford, one of the players who didn't start because, again, not being a senior, we started all seniors 
did uh, North Harford on senior night. We didn't get a chance to see that on air, but very moving ceremony where mom and dad and brother and sister uh, walked out to the center of the field and flowers and tears and, you know, then you got to dry the tears and play the game. Play the game. <laughs> and it's a nice time, too, for the girls to be showcased a little bit because mm -hmm. when they're being announced, all their accomplishments through high school are being announced. And the people in the audience are sitting there listening to what these girls actually do Absolutely. through their school day. And it's just amazing. North Harford, that's Annika Peterson trying to get the ball out there. Notice what you said about her low center of gravity. She runs low to the ground. She does, which does help her transfer the ball because, you know, you have to have that lower gravity in order for things to work here on this field hockey field. Third-year player. She is a third-year player. She, it would have been a fourth if she didn't lose that year to COVID. Yeah. And we talk about that. If you were a senior last year and you lost your senior season, be it football or soccer or basketball or wrestling, whatever it was, just something you can never get back. Yeah. Your senior year, and you know that, being an athlete, from here in North Hartford, you look back at that senior year and it's just something that is just a special year. It is a special year. It. You know, because unfortunately, if some of these girls and or students, uh, student athletes aren't playing in college, right. this is their last time to walk onto a field. Absolutely. You think, what is it, 5% maybe of the high school athletes, even the great athletes who actually go on going and play to college? Go college ball. Yeah. Inside of 13 minutes now left in this third period, North Hartford again trying to equalize the score, been down one nothing the entire game. That's going to be Simult Wright's ball. Mustangs obviously looking to try to build on that score. Yes. Taking it back a bit, and that's always risky. It is always risky, but sometimes taking it back will open up some opportunities for you, especially if you're trying to switch. Yeah up your, your field play. Karis May, that number 18, who had the ball for C. Milton Wright. A 4.4 GPA student, National Honor Society. She also plays lacrosse. And basketball. And basketball, yes. Looks to play lacrosse in college next year. Well, actually, in two years, she's only a junior. Yes. She's a good little athlete. Also in the Art Honor Society, French Club. Science Honor Society, we're talking about Karis May. One of the defenders for uh, the C. Milton Wright Mustangs. It was Olivia Levy, number six for, Pat for C. Milton Wright, I should say. Tell you about some of these students when we have a moment. This is Olivia Levy, 4.625 GPA. Wow. I thought 4.0 was perfect. What are they doing? What's going on? Well, as soon as they get into high school and they can take these um, accelerated programs, yeah. the AP classes, yep. it's then out of a 5.0 GPA. Also a member of the Best Buddies. We're talking about Olivia Levy. That's the organization we talked about where kids from the regular school program become buddies with kids from the special needs. Olivia is in the yearbook uh, staff, Science National Honor Society. Where does she find time to sleep? <laughs> I don't know how this works. Once again, sports teaches them time management. It surely does. <laughs> and I've had the young athletes tell me that they do better when they're playing a sport because time management, they know they've got to go home, get that homework done. You know, when you're not playing a sport, you sort of go home and you relax a bit. You do. And then by that time, it's time to socialize and the night's gone. Yes, yeah, so when, you, when you play a sport, it's hard to procrastinate. Mm -hmm. Here comes Seamilton Wright. That's Winslow DePeso. And there's another goal. There's the big goal. Was that DePeso who scored? We will probably have to go back and replay that to see it. Because there was about four girls from Seamilton Wright right on top of that ball. Ten minutes and ten seconds left in the third period. Here you see DePeso with the ball. DePeso, it's knocked in off. Off Looks of. Looks like number. 15. 15. Yeah, that's off Claire Burroughs. So she gets her second goal off an assist from DePeso. So DePeso now has 11 assists, and Barrow now has, or Burroughs, I should say, has seven goals, both of them tonight. So at 10 10 of the third period, Seamilton Wright goes up now by two goals. And she knew that she needed to put her stick on that ball because. Um, 
it was sent into the 16. And in order for that goal to count, it had to actually be touched inside the 16. And DePesa, what a nice job of carrying the ball all the way in. All the way in, yes. And then making the pass and right, put it right on the stick of Burroughs, and Burroughs made the goal. So 2 nothing now, C. Milton Wright with the lead. Rebecca, one nothing, two nothing. Doesn't sound like much of a difference, but it, wow, in it a doesn't. low scoring game like North, the like a uh, field hockey. Once you start getting up there, two, three, nothing. Sometimes it can be hard to come back from that, but they still have nine and a half minutes in this quarter, and they have another 15 minutes in the next quarter. It just all depends on uh, how they carry the ball. Grace Conklin, number five, who's carrying the ball there for North Hartford. Hawks on the attack, they need to get this score down to two to one so that they then can have a chance to chip away at it. Two nothing, it's just like, you know, psychologically, it's like a barrier. It is. Mustangs uh, coming away with the ball, taken away by North Harford. Whistle blows and C. Milton Wright, no, it goes to North, North Harford. That's Conkling number five who had it momentarily and now back to C. Milton. Mustangs again, 5-0 and oh in the conference, 7-2, and two, a six-game winning streak, looking to go to seven in a row. Rebecca, you mentioned there's like a two-week break between the end of the regular season and when the postseason starts. Yes, um, so our uh, North Hartford's last game will be Monday, and then playoffs actually do not start for two weeks, which is unusual. However, I believe the reasoning behind it is, is if any of the games would have gotten canceled because of COVID related issues that those teams would have time to make up those games because it does matter for placement into the playoffs. That is a nice block from Miss Autumn Tagliferi. Autumn a junior here at uh, North Harford wants to go into the medical field, uh, wants to be a doctor. I could see that happening. Yeah. She, she's a good kid. Yeah. Here come the Hawks, looking to try to build some momentum. Oh, that is Hannah Krizak. Looks like she uh, may have, not. I hope she didn't injure herself. Looks like she's coming up a little bit gimpy. A little bit. And this field, when they first put the turf in, was very slick. Very. The first uh, iteration of it, they took that out and put this new field in. And I think the, the, the actual footing now is pretty good. It is. The other field, it had a lot of hard surface underneath also. So um, it seemed like there was more um, issues with concussions yeah. and hitting, that, hitting the field. So, so it's it was good news and bad news. North Harford had the first uh, turf field yes. in the county. The bad news is they got the worst turf field. That they did. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, good for North Harford. It was taken up and a new field put down. Yes. Now all the uh, fields in the county are turf. Uh, Patterson Mill finally got its turf field which is very nice because this game is so different on turf mm -hmm. than it is grass. It is one sport that um, turf will make a difference in the gameplay and the outcome of every game. Mm -hmm. Jamie Cabanall there, number 25, had triggered it in. One thing you notice around lacrosse goals and hockey goals and soccer goals, the grass gets worn out and it becomes just almost unplayable, especially when it rains. Yes. battling for the ball. Coming up on the six minute mark left here in the uh, third period. Call is obstruction. Well, it actually went off of her foot. Okay. When she tried to get the ball around. Here comes C. Milton Wright. Idea to try to center that ball. And there's the obstruction where she actually turned her body between yes. the ball and her opponent. You can do that if you have full control of the ball when you're playing it. Any other time, if you turn your back and position your body between the opponent and the ball like that, it actually causes obstruction. Well, nice save there in the goal. The goalie was out of position. 
Yes, she had already come out. Now we're looking at North Harford with a defensive corner here, and Seymour Wright will get their offense. Looked like it was Taglia Ferry who made that save. She was the only last line of defense right there. The goalie had come out. Sarah Reef Snyder, who's in as the goal now. It was a big, big uh, defensive play by yes. Talia Ferry. Yes. She's very quick with her stick and um, not afraid to get in there. Not a big kid. And again, one of the things about field hockey and soccer is size is really not a determining factor. You can it be is not. small and quick and aggressive and uh, be as good as the larger person. Yes, you can be. And speed is very important when playing field hockey because it is a fast paced game. Reef Snyder trying to fire her defensive players up. Nice takeaway. Nice takeaway by Fortune. Kendall Fortune, again, a leading scorer on this team. One of the captains of the team, along with Monica Peterson. Oh. A little bit of a Riley Mason couldn't uh, round that ball up a little wide. Little right wide. idea, but uh, just not the execution wasn't there. Was not there. Here comes Tagle Ferry again with it. Tagle Ferry, really very quick. Yeah, she has very good stick skills and very good knowledge of the field. That's a nice little back. That was flip. a nice little back. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you see a sleight of hand, so to speak. Yeah. Nice pass. Here comes North Harper now. Trying to build something. Pass just a little bit wide for Mason again. Here you see uh, the look at the senior portraits. That was uh, senior night here. Uh, each of them, all 10 of those senior young ladies honored prior to the game. Actually, these seniors, is my f I, they were freshmen my first year coaching here. Mm. So it's a little bittersweet. I love these girls. They're your babies. <laughs> They're You're my babies. Ready to turn your babies out to the world. <laughs> yep. <laughs> your daughter who was unable to play because of an injury today? Unfortunately, she got injured in Delaney's game on Wednesday. Um, it was fortunately it was just a sprain. They thought her ankle was actually broken at oh first. My. So that's so scary. It it is. Um, but she's a tough cookie and. If she had got her way today, she would have played, but. She was up here in the booth keeping score, and uh, she said, Mom gave me a hard time because I forgot to blow the horn <laughs> on the first time. <laughs> she did, because normally the horn is blown a lot of times down on the field by our bookkeeper, but she was not only the scorekeeper, she was our bookkeeper today. Um, and the horn blower. And the horn blower, and you know. Well, she did it She did two other. out of three, she so. Did, yep. <laughs> and every other period, she did it well. Yes. She actually was Her first our name, uh, Bailey. Bailey Smith. Bailey Smith. She was actually our manager from sixth to and seventh grade. Eighth grade she would have been also, but um, got shut down because of COVID. Bailey's a freshman. Bailey is a freshman. So and your older daughter? My older daughter Hannah. She graduated here in 2020. She was um, a varsity player, three-year varsity player here for field hockey, and three-year varsity player for lacrosse here, and she now plays lacrosse in college. So at Shenandoah University. Shenandoah, yes, she's one of those five percent that actually gets to play in college. So um, ball out front of the net now. North Harford looking to try to get that ball in the net if they can. Unsuccessful. Good Uns job by yes, Seymour Wright. Seymour Wright did a nice job clearing that out to the sides. That's exactly what you talked about before, clearing it out to the side. That first goal was sort of, uh, let's say, North Harford's fault. They didn't clear it. The second goal, just a beautiful pass from DePeso uh, to Burroughs. It was, and it was quick movement up the field. So unfortunately, unless you have defensemen that are already in, in position down there, but they weren't because they were moving back up the field very quickly, it's very hard to stop those goals sometimes. Inside a minute left in the third period, 2-0 the score. Seymour to Wright scored in the first minute of the uh, game and then scored their second goal in the uh, third period, both by Burroughs, Claire Burroughs. That was Greer Strine bringing that ball up. She had a nice uh, transfer up the field. Some pretty little dodges, unfortunately. North Harford just could not capitalize on uh, bringing that ball back up there again. Clock continued to wind at 25 seconds and remaining here in the third period. North Harper will get a corner. And this is the instance where I was talking that when the time is winding down, I would send all my players up 
on that around that circle because this way it's trying to keep the ball Rebecca, inside. Those five seconds, four seconds, they've got to get this done. Here. Well, they Three actually, if if it's a corner, as long as even if time runs out, the corner okay. still gets to be thank played. Thank you, thank you. I was worried because the time no. is running out. And that's why it's important to bring all your um, players up because after it leaves the circle and the corner is over, yes. the corner is yeah, over the, the and the time is expired. done. So, and so there there's, the end, of the, there's the end of that quarter. Thank you for clarifying that because I was watching the time wind down. And I'm thinking, <laughs> you know, you're lollygagging. Come yeah. on. Now, any time that a corner is called, uh, even if time winds down, the corner always will get played out. Once the ball comes traveled out and back into the circle and they try to play it, if the ball gets loose and keeps traveling outside the circle, the corner's over. By the way, Rebecca, that term lollygagging, that's a term we use uh, <laughs> in, in field hockey. It's a field hockey term, lollygagging. Mm -hmm. No. Is that even a word? I bet you it's in uh, um, some place in a dictionary. Yeah, we, we all know <laughs> it means wasting time. Time. Yes. yes. My father used to say that to me all the time. Stop lollygagging. Gagging. Yeah. Yes. Although he used a few other words. Words with it probably, yeah, yes. It, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We won't mention those here or there. No. So we're entering the fourth period, 15 minutes left. Uh, if you're North Harford's coach, Rebecca Smith, what do you tell your team? I would tell them to fight hard till the end. 15 minutes is a long, long span of time in field there hockey. There you see Carla, there's the, the coach telling them that. Oh yeah, 15 minutes, a lot can happen in 15 minutes with field hockey. Carla Harvard, the veteran coach here at North Hartford. English teacher, one of the great, great young people. I call them young, because everybody's young to me. <laughs> uh, yeah, and doing a great job both as a teacher and as a coach. Yes. Now I'll reverse that if you're C. Milton Wright, if you're Kelsey Lovelace, what do you tell your team? You see Kelsey talking to her team now. I would actually tell them not to give up either, only because sometimes a two to zero score can be deceiving. They could give up a little bit because maybe they are getting tired. They think they have it in the bag. And unfortunately when you do that, sometimes when you let your guard down, it can allow North Harper to come in there and tie up the game. Yeah, you've got that 2 nothing score, so you've got one goal sort of to play with, okay? If it's one nothing, you're just on pins and needles. Yes. You don't want to say that. You don't want to say, well, gosh, we've got a goal to play with. But the truth is, for North Harford to have a chance, obviously, they've got to narrow that score, score to 2 to, to 1. Yes, and they And then do. it is anybody's ball game. At that point, it is. Because it is such a low-scoring game. Having a 2-0, to zero, it does kind of give you that uneasy feeling like you might not be able to get it. But yeah. once again, 15 minutes is, is a lot of time. It is. Yeah. And we all know that, again, there is overtime. If we do end up in a 2-2 tie or whatever the time might be, two 10-minute sudden death overtime periods, and then a shootout, actually, where you go, what, it's seven on seven in the in the playoff, in the over overtime, and then it's, what, five shots on goal? It's five shots on goal. They do a 1v1, so it's a player against the goalie. Um, each team would have five players that they designate to take it, and each player gets to play their, their time and whatever the score is at the end of that. Of course, we're, we're assuming a 2 nothing lead. C. Moulton Wright would like to think that they can preserve that lead, maybe even add to it. Yes. Mustangs are wanting nothing better to come in here and win their seventh game in a row and also remain undefeated in the Chesapeake Division and win on senior night on your opponent's field. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, my. Unfortunately, it has happened before. Yeah. <laughs> That's like homecoming. You know, when you're scheduling a homecoming game, always schedule a team you know you can beat. Uh, exactly. It's my fault. <laughs> but in my case, it was we couldn't find anybody we could beat. Not it was yet. Like, <laughs> you know, can we play like maybe the JV team? team. Perhaps yeah. we could beat them. We were talking, uh, your mom graduated here in 1962. 1962. The same year that North Hartford won the state basketball championship. The yes. year that I was a senior, we got defeated twice up here by North Hartford. Uh, came close each time, but uh, North Hartford won the, that year. Aberdeen also went to the state uh, finals and lost in the Class A. I think North Hartford won the Class B. B. And their banner still hangs in the, in the gymnasium. Do you realize that's 59 years ago? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. And what's nice about the class of 1962 from here from North Harford is they still get together every so often. Yeah. I think it's like once a once a month they get all get together for dinner, yeah. which is really nice. They have remained a very uh, close class. But once again, you get that up here in North Harford area. Yeah. Well, here go the Hawks now needing to make something happen. You can see the urgency. And as you said, Rebecca, we don't have to say who has the ball. Mm -hmm. We know the way that... Uh, 
She runs so low to the ground. She does. Hanukkah Peterson we're talking about, yes. number eight. And she keeps that ball way out in front of her, which is what you need because it stays off your feet at that point. Fun to watch. Yeah. It is It is a lot of fun yeah. to watch. Hanukkah again, a senior. We talked about her artwork being chosen to go to the state house and hang in the governor's mansion. Which is quite a big accomplishment. I was going to say, uh, art is not in among my uh, skills. Uh, stick men I could do. <laughs> stick men, I, it was sort of the limit of what I could do. Even them, they were a little crooked, but hey. <laughs> That's great. We it's all have our own talents. We, you know, I'm still looking for <laughs> <laughs> She's a member of the Art Guild, and we talked about the Voices of Equity. We're talking about Annika Peterson. Coming up on the 13 minute mark, again, 15 minute quarters. You see that Seamilton Wright lead two to nothing. That's been, they've led just about the entire game. That first goal scored at 14, 15 of the first period. Battling for the ball. Yeah. So not right, we'll actually keep possession of it. And a Krizak, number 12, the young lady battling for the ball. Remember the cry of a Hawk newspaper. Love that name. Yes, and that that actually has uh, has been its name for many, many years. I actually used to be on the cry of the Hawk. Uh, I was just going to ask, were you like the editor-in-chief? or I was the business editor. Ah, so so I did the all the ads, and oh then yeah. I did write for the paper okay. when I was here. Mm. I had James Mason, who was my... Uh, oh. James Journalism Mason. teacher, he was amazing. Teacher of the year, uh, one year, James uh, Mason and I were, were great buddies. Oh. Uh, he actually, ha I have to say, is probably my favorite teacher from North Harford back in the day. Loved him. Yep, <laughs> yep, yep. Good guy. Very good guy. There Our booth is telling us that Voices of Equity promotes, uh, what was that, Tim? Understanding and acceptance of diversity. diversity. That's a good thing. I believe that's a newer club. Uh, uh, probably, yeah. North Harford has one of the um, magnet uh, programs where uh, they have uh, agriculture. Is a, so kids come from all over the county to all come to the, the ag program. Some of the greatest programs, uh, Aberdeen has that Science Math Academy. Edgewood has the, the uh, International Baccalaureate. Yeah. Chow Town Homeland Security. I do know that like Grace Conklin, um, North Harford's number five, and Corinne Sims, North Harford's number four, Allison Stewart, uh, number 10, they are all in the magnet program here. They're all from North Harford though? All, um, actually Grace and Corinne would have attended, I believe, C. Milton Wright. Wow. If they would have gone to their- uh, Their home school. Their home school. That's such a, a commitment when you leave your home community catch a bus maybe at six o'clock in the morning and it is. You know, come to a strange community and you know you don't know the people and you come there because you have an interest in that particular it program. Is. Started back in uh, I think 2003 at Aberdeen when the Science Math Academy came along. Yes. And then the other, uh, I think uh, uh, Bel Air has the medical science program. Yes, the biomedical. That was a nice move by Simon Wright keeping that in. Hawks looking to try to build something. That's Talia Farrow, number one. <laughs> Just like her stick work. Yeah, she has, she's very quick with her stick. There you see her. Nice she picture of her, good job guys. Yes. North Harvard has played well. Again, the one goal we talked about was, we don't call it a fluke. It was, uh, you know, defensive laps on the part of North Harvard. That second goal, though, was a thing of beauty. It was. It was a. It was executed perfectly. It's a reason why Winslow De Peso has uh, 10 assists now, 11 assists on the year. She carried the ball perfectly, found the uh, Burroughs open on the left side, and just hit her perfectly, and Burroughs, sort of a one-timer, tapped it right past the goalie. And that's all you have to do. Put put your stick on it one time. As long as it comes off your stick, it can be a goal as long as it's touched inside that 16. That was Corin Sims you mentioned a moment ago. Yes. Number four with the ball. 
time is a wasting. Nine minutes left in this game. There's Sims. Sims is very, very quick with her stick also. Um, this is the first year that I've got to witness her playing, and I, I enjoy watching her play. She's very quick and uh, seems to always be where she needs to be. Field hockey is a very intricate sport, a yeah. tough sport to play. You, the, you know, the skills are you know, being having your head down, watching the ball, but yet knowing where you are, knowing where your teammates are. Yes, you know, and it's it's all about staying in position. Um, I always preach to my players that if you play your position and not the ball so much, you will actually get more touches on that ball and be able to score. Oh, oh. almost like sort of a backhand shot, shot. there. Not sure who that was. That uh, that was it. Hannah Krizak who did that reverse. Hannah Krizak, uh, three goals on the year. Number 12, the senior. That was a golden opportunity there. It for was. The Unfortunately, Hawks. it was just a little wide and went out. The cameraman. There, there's Sims blocking that up. Cameraman John down there in danger. That ball was coming precariously close to him. Yes. John, if I were you, I would duck. So this is actually going to be a corner because unfortunately that ball did not need to go out of bounds off of the defensive stick. It was already heading that way. So that's why it becomes a corner because uh, it was intentionally just hit out. This would be a perfect opportunity for North Hartford to score that one goal. To Absolutely, 7.20 yes. counting, the clock still running. You can see they've got the offensive players around that circle. As soon as the ball is played in, it's got to come outside the 16. Yes. Got to come out and then right back in. There's a shot and a goal. There we go. The goal scored by number seven, Kendall Fortune. Fortune. Kendall Fortune gets her fifth goal of the year. And it's just like that at 7.04. It's what North Hartford needed back within one goal. That's what exactly they needed. So now it just closes the gap and here comes a replay. You'll see how this uh, fortune. fortune controlling the ball and just scooping it past the goalie, past yep. Phoebe Henderson for the score. Kendall is very quick with her stick too, and she's got that speed. She so is definitely a leader on this team. So now two to one, now it becomes not just we hope we can tie, tie. we hope we can win. It now is actually within reach at this point. Absolutely, and the momentum. And the Rebecca, ball. how about momentum in this game? Once you score, you know, do goals come sort of in bunches sometimes? Sometimes they can, um, sometimes it can take a while. You know, it all depends on the mo motivation of the players. How bad these girls want it. Well, Kendall Fortune with that goal, it was well done, sort of a shoot hit the ball to herself, kind of dribbled it yes. herself, found an opening and then scooped it right among two or three players right past the goalie. That will actually be out on Seamount right. They Harford's had the touch. Ball. So it's North Harford's ball, yes. Here come the Hawks. Down by that one goal, they trailed the entire game. Nice tackle. Keeping it inside. Well, they're bringing it back. Yeah, the referee had blown the whistle on an obstruction, but I don't think he didn't hear it. So C. Milton Light with the ball. Yes. Mustangs looking to salt away this last five minutes and 38 seconds if they can. And that will actually, because it hit one of our players when it flew up, that becomes the North Harford ball. But it was a very nice hit by uh, Karis Mays of There's Simone that Wright. loft now. They call that the, uh, what? It's an aerial. Um, it is it is intentionally to meant to go over top when those girls are blocking up. Karis uh, May with putting the ball in play. Yeah. Why do they call that illegal? Well, because when you do the aerial, it actually has to land within five yards of an oh. intended target. Okay. It also has to be five yards away from other people as a safety roll. Okay. So, um, Unfortunately, if it's ever lifted and there's more people that move into that circle, it becomes dangerous. So it will get called back. 
if you hear me sort of like swatting my mic, it's because we're being invaded by the bugs. We are being invaded by the bugs, <laughs> yes. Gotten bit a couple times up here already. It's that humidity that we were talking about. But hey, we're, we're persevering because we're professionals. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well you are at least. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just sitting here trying to swat bugs away from me. <laughs> Perhaps if we turned off the light, then we couldn't see. Yeah, then we couldn't oh, see. Oh, well. It's a tough choice. Come the Hawks again, now coming down to the four minute mark. What a game this has been. It's everything we hoped it would be. Close played, yes. well played. Well played, yes. Seen a lot of skills, a lot of stick skills going on on both sides. Clock now inside four minutes. Rebecca Smith, if you were the defense, if you were C. Milton Wright, could you salt the game away? Could you stall and maybe not advance the ball? You could. Um, you, with that, you would pretty much try to keep it in the backfield somewhat to um, get it away from North Hartford and then pull it up. I would probably switch sides at this point if I was them because the side that they're on right now is actually C. Milton Wright's um, weak side. Uh -huh. Since all sticks and everybody plays as a right-hander, your strong side is always the best side to go to. Sarah Durbro trying to clear that ball. Mm. North Harvard's ball. Oh. Coming up inside three minutes now. Getting to be crunch time if you're North Harvard, you uh, Using my term again, no lolly gagging, gagging allowed. <laughs> Gosh, I can just hear my dad saying that. That's scary. <laughs> Stop your lolly gagging. Yes, sir. <laughs> Hawks moving, looking to try to center. You can hear the fans. Oh, oh. Two Hawks run together. together. That was Peterson. Got to try to call each other off and keep the ball in there. Looking for the oh, shot. shot. There it is in oh. front of the net. Mm. Can they get a stick on it? Yeah. And she saved it. Is that Fortune? That actually, I believe, is Grace Conklin. Or Corin Sims, number four, who had it momentarily. That's current, yeah. They all have these ponytails with this blonde hair, and when they put those ribbons in, sometimes it's hard to see who's who. Monica Peterson, again. number eight. Ball right out front. Well, well nice clear by yes. C. Milton right inside a minute 40. Right in front of the net. And it's going to be a corner, because unfortunately that went off of the defensive foot when it was bouncing off to the side there. But time is a waste in a minute 35 left in the game. Two to one, we're coming right down to the, to the end of the game. Yes. I think we wrote the script this way, didn't we? Yeah, we let's did. Let's bring it right down to the <laughs> end. Now let's score a goal. Let's tie it. Let's go to overtime. And once again, with it only being a minute 20 left now in this game, I would probably pull up my defensemen a little bit. Because they are lollygagging. Come on, it's a minute 11, minute 10. Centered, shot, go! Go for North Harford. We have a tie. It looks like it might be Peterson, I'm not sure. Now to see that replay, they get in there all together Whoa. sometimes in that circle, it's so hard to tell. So that is with 59 seconds left in this contest, we have a tie at two to two. That noise you hear is our band, so excited. Here it is. Corinne. Corinne Sims. It was Corinne Sims with the goal. Number four, Corinne Sims with the goal. I mean, how amazing is that? 59 seconds left in the game. Actually, North Hartford came into this final period down 2 nothing, scored at 7.04, and then scored again here with 59 seconds left. Once again, 15 minutes is a long time. Yeah, <laughs> 39 seconds. A lot can happen. And we just saw that happening in the last seven minutes. <laughs> 10-4.
Ken is asking about the rules for overtime. <laughs> we'll explain that. See, Milton Wright has a chance here. They're closing in. They could still score here. But while in front, oh, saved by the goalie. Reese Snyder, the ball is under the goalie with 15 seconds left. Now it's free. My goodness. Reese Snyder very happy she was able to save that. Yeah. Five seconds, four seconds. It can be hard seconds. when you're down like that, too. Wow. One second, and that is the end of this regulation contest. We have what we hope for, and that is overtime. overtime. My, the, the van, they are just excited. They love overtime. <laughs> it's the thing they pray for. Just let's give me overtime. <laughs> Tim asked about what the rules are, and Rebecca, I'll let you explain the two 10-minute overtime periods. So at this point, they will go into a 7v7. So normally there's 11 girls on the field, but in overtime we switch down to seven. Mm -hmm. um, it can be, it's for 10 minutes. It can be a very tiring 10 minutes with 7v7. If no score after that point in time, and nobody's on top, they will do another 7v7. It allows you sometimes to switch up your players or sometimes coaches decide to keep the same players in for those uh, next 10 minutes. But it is sudden death, so the first one who scores wins. Um, they, it used to be sudden death. I be, sometimes it's uh, determined by the refs prior to the game, but I believe that they have no. decided it is sudden now death. Now, if they were to go those two 10-minute periods and still it's tied, yes. then what happens? Then they go into a 1v1. Uh, over time, which it used to be strokes. They used to have five girls they would pick for strokes to go up against the um, goalie, but now they do a 1v1, so it would be one player against the goalie. And each team would get five girls out there to go ahead and take those 1v1s, and each girl gets that opportunity and uh, to see what, how many points they could put on the board. Well, we'll recap the scoring for you. The first goal was scored at 14-15 in the first period, just to, you know, like uh, 45 seconds into the game. Claire Burrows for uh, C. Milton Wright, the sophomore, scored a goal. The ball was sort of out in the middle of the uh, of the crease area, using a lacrosse term, and was kicked in or knocked in off the stick of Claire Burrows. Second goal, that's the score at the half, was one nothing. In the uh, in the uh, third period. Burrow scored again, this time on an assist from Winslow DePeso. That made it 2 nothing at 10-10 left in the third period. That's what it was entering the fourth period. At 7.04, Fortune scored for North Hartford on a single hit. And then with 59 seconds left in the game off a corner, Sims is able to score to put the game now at 2-2. Two to two, And that's where we are as we enter overtime. Yes. Wow. How exciting. Worth the price of admission, <laughs> and I didn't pay anything to get in. <laughs> Wait a minute, I shouldn't have said that. They'll come up here well, and ask me to pay. I didn't pay to get in either, but okay. I was coaching a game at that time too. Yeah, so. I don't have that excuse. <laughs> I'll pay on the way out. <coughs> it's well, been worth the price of admission. And it se is. Senior night, I mean, again, the memories that are being created here tonight. Wow. Yes. Corinne Sims, number four. Corinne is a sophomore. And uh, Fortune, um, Kendall Fortune, number seven, also is a junior. So two underclassmen have been able to score the goals on senior night here for North Harford. Yes, this is uh, Corinne's first year on uh, varsity as not unfortunately having a freshman season here at North Harford or anywhere in the county. And then um, this is Kendall's second year because she was on varsity her freshman year. So again, they'll choose seven. And Rebecca, how do you do that? Do you choose some defense people, some you offensive players? You do. You, you want to choose personally as a coach. I would tell you to choose some of your strongest players out there, the ones that have the endurance as a midi or a forward to get the ball up. But you also want to put your strongest defenseman in there because if C. Milton Wright would have a breakaway, North Hartford needs to be able to have the defenseman in there to make sure that it's not going in that goal. And I'm thinking about sort of like softball and now baseball where they put a runner on second base in extra innings. By taking it down to seven players, it makes the action much more wide open it and the chances to score are much greater, I would think. Exactly. The ball's got to move very quickly between these seven players too as it's going. But you think about 100 yards now, seven players, where you had 11 or 10 on the field counting the goalie. Mm -hmm. um, with, you know, it's the 11th player. You had a lot more players to be able to move the ball. Here, a lot more running. Yes, and it, it does tire. These girls tire out. 10 minutes doesn't seem like a long time of yeah. running, but 10 minutes is a long time of running. <laughs> Especially you played the whole game. Yes. Normally you, the game is over and you know, you're going to the locker room and so forth. Now you're just coming back on the field. Yes. Now again, if you talk about momentum, talk about uh, you know uh, uh, 
pressure. Seymour tonight had the game in their hand. They had it in the bag, it looked like. In the fourth period with seven minutes left. I mean, really, they were counting that as their seventh straight win, you would yes. think. And suddenly North Hartford. Now, does that mean North Hartford has the advantage? I don't think it means that they have advantage. I just think at this point, North Hartford really wanted to come up with something and put some scores on the board, So, which is exactly what they did. You and know. here we go. We know that number seven is in the ball game for uh, North Hartford. That's Kendall Fortune. See if we can identify the players. North Hartford that has the ball. Yes, that is Grace Conklin who has the ball, who went up to Corinne Sims. Sims who scored that goal with 59 seconds left. That's Sims. Yes. And she keeps it in. Which like it goes right to, this is where, you know, a 7v7, it's hard because if girls aren't in the right position, unfortunately, who are you feeding the ball to when you take that hit? Out of bounds it goes, it'll go to North Hartford. Again, seven players on a side, that's six plus the goalie? That is six plus the goalie, yes, Don. So it's actually six who are actually doing the, the passing of the ball. Yes. That's a lot of yardage to cover by six players. Yes, with a, with a hundred yard field, yes it is. Yeah. <laughs> Seymour Wright's ball now. Mm -hmm. Again, the we believe, I, I think that's the way the, the uh, rules are. The first goal scores, scores wins. Yes, it usually is sudden death. Unfortunately, field hockey seems to change the rules all the time. And that is a beautiful clear by uh, North Hartford's goalie. Now, which goalie is that? Do we that know? is Sarah Wright Schneider. Okay, so Wright Schneider, who played the second half, is yes. now the goalie yes. in the overtime period. Yes. Sarah is a very good goalie. Um, Ellie Kuchera, Kuchera yep. had played that first, first, uh, yes. first half. I like all three of the varsity goalies here at North Hartford. I think they all offer something to the team. Grace Underwood putting the ball in play. Unfortunately, it doesn't come in play, so it goes back to C. Milton Wright. Right. I say unfortunately if you're North Hartford. What pressure on these players. It is a lot. I mean, you're North Hartford, you've come all the way back from being down 2 nothing. It's the kind of thing where you would hate to then lose it here in overtime. Yes. You see Milton Wright, the opposite is you led the whole game and now you have a chance to go ahead and make up for those two goals that were scored. Yes. It's going to be a obstruction on C. Milton, so it gives uh, North Hartford that ball back. Monica but Peterson taken away by C. Milton taken Wright. Taken right away by C. Milton Wright. Here come the Mustangs. One thing that's very important is uh, as a player, when you're playing offense and the ball's being fed in, you have to move to the ball. Clara Burroughs, number 15, had the ball momentarily there for C. Milton Wright. She's the player who scored both of the goals for C. Milton Wright. Mm. Obstruction, Nicole? That is obstruction. Unfortunately, um, it was on Annika Peterson, but now, in this instance, it, they've got to travel it five yards like she is before it goes inside that circle. That's Burroughs. And it's going to be a corner. And again, you hear the disappointment in Rebecca Smith's voice being a <laughs> North Hartford coach. A corner is the opportunity. Now, again, limited numbers of players here. So it is. And now, because it's a 7v7, our, our corners kind of get limited. It is only three defensemen back with our goalie instead of four. Like uh, Sarah Durboro, uh, number 34, being sent in by C. Milton Wright. Sarah, the sophomore. And C. Milton Wright could take it all away right here. Riley Cushman, number 12. Just got three offensive players and defenders. You only have, what, uh, three in the net? You only have three in the net on a 7v7. The rules change a little bit once you have that 77, so you only have three defensemen inside. And that is a good block by Annika. Annika Peterson. Peterson. And, and she, unfortunately, the, the way that it came off of her, the ball stayed on for C. Milton Wright. Looks like Burroughs again with the ball. And now the out ball is out, so we're at, at another corner. And again, the corners are scoring opportunities every time, and especially with fewer players on the uh, on the field. Yes. 
You can see Sarah Reese Snyder is a Ref Snyder, I think you say her name. Reich Snyder. Reich, Reich Snyder. Mm -hmm. You can see that she's trying to pump the crowd up. She pumps everybody up. <laughs> that girl is, she is quite an energy on this team. If you're not pumped once you're in her uh, presence, there might be something wrong with you because that girl can get anybody. It in. That is a nice block. That's Peterson again. Battling for the ball. North Hartford comes away with it. Ball's been in the North Hartford defensive zone pretty much this entire overtime. overtime. Oh. Down they go. Oh, I hope they're okay. Yeah. That was quite a collision, both players going for the ball. It's Kendall Fortune who gets up a bit slowly for North Hartford. Hawks will get the ball, 4.46 left here in this first overtime period. Kendall Fortune scoring one of the two goals for North Hartford. Grace has nice ball carrying, but. Underwood has the ball taken away by Burroughs. Claire Burroughs, again, the two goal scorer for Singleton Wright. Fortune's back on the ball. None the worse for wear from that collision. Yes. Nice defensive job. Yes. They're done by 34 Sarah DeBurrow. North Harvard still with the ball. It's going to be a long hit now for North Harford. So that'll be from the 25-yard line? From the 25-yard line. And that's only because it went off of a defensive player. And the rules are she can't score from the 25. It has to touch a defensive or offensive player. It has to be touched inside that 16. She could not just hit it directly into the circle. There's a missed pass by North Harford. Yep. Seymour Wright on the offense. Good job by... Yes. That's a... Yep. Yeah, that's uh, Talia Ferry who made that save. Yeah. All of them, Talia Ferry, the young lady who wants to become a doctor. Member of the National Honor Society. Come see Milton with the ball. Breaking clear. Yep. Obstruction the call. Obstruction, yep. See Milton Wright getting their offensive that, players in zone. That was on Grace Underwood. Inside, three minutes left in the first overtime. Burroughs, Claire Burroughs, with good stick work. That's a save from uh, North Hartford's goalie. Autumn with the ball going to Grace Conklin. Good clear by Tagliere Ferry. Here comes North Hartford running free. Oh, that great was Karis away. Mays. Karis Mays with the nice tackle on that yeah, one. That was. It, when it, just like North Harvard had a chance to go in. Go in, and she she denied it. Hawk still with the ball. Unfortunately, that went off of our number uh, five, Grace Conklin, so C. Milton Wright will get that ball. Coming up on the two-minute mark in the first overtime period. And running this whole field as a 77 is very tiring. So if we end up into a second overtime, most likely the coaches might switch it up a little bit. Sometimes they don't. Yeah, you can see the energy level has sort of ebbed a bit. Mm -hmm. They're still trying hard, but they're not able to put as much uh, you know, speed into their movements. Yes. Minute 37, minute 36 left in the first overtime. Got a stop there. And a nice clear oh, coming outside. outside. Minute 25. North Hartford could not get their stick on it to keep it inbounds. Sarah DeBurrow putting the ball in play for C. Milton Wright. Talia Ferry. Yep. Taking the ball up. Coming up on the one minute mark. Inside a minute now. 
Here comes Singleton Wright. Riley Cushman. Off ref Snyder. Thirty-four, thirty-three. They're actually giving them a long hit. So in it with it the way it came off of her, it wasn't intentional to take it out. It was a save, so that's why it would be a long hit coming up. Inside twenty seconds. We got Hannah Kruzek now with taking the ball up. Coming up on 10 seconds left, it looks like we're gonna to go to a second overtime period. Seven, six, five. So we'll go to a second overtime period tied at two. Yes. Two to two the score. That's what we were at the end of regulation. It was one nothing at half. Two nothing at the end of two uh, three periods. North Harvard scored their two goals coming down the stretch in that fourth period. And that's where we are as we enter the second overtime. Yes. Wow. See what can happen here in the next 10 minutes. You made a very good point. Do we keep the same players out there? They're your best players, your strongest players, but they're tired. They're tired. So do you bring in maybe a player who's not quite as skilled, uh, but who is fresh? A coach's decision. No, it's another 10 minutes. Sorry about that. I would actually, because I noticed they took Corinne Sims out, um, North Hartford did there in that first 10 minute overtime and put in Hannah Kruzak because you can substitute. Most likely they probably saw that the fact that nobody was scoring at that point, they're yeah. going to want to put Corinne back in. So, you know, as a coach, you do have to decide what's going to be best. Um, if some of the girls um, of the I know of North Hartford that's out there, I can guarantee you they're telling me, put me in, coach. I'm yeah. ready to play. <laughs> put me in, coach. I'm ready to play. Yeah. We talked about it being a very humid night. It's yes. certainly not hot at all. It's probably in the 60 degrees or maybe even the high 50s. But that humidity, uh, I mean, you yes. can just feel it up here in the booth. And that takes the wind out of you it as does. a player. It does. It's hard. Well, it has been exciting. and uh, Yes. And C. Mm. Melton Wright has did a very good job of keeping that ball out in that first overtime. Absolutely, yeah. When you saw those two goals being scored by North Harford, mm. you know, you kind of get that sick feeling in the pit of your stomach. You do, you do. Well, Karis Mays had a beautiful block down here, bringing that ball, denying North Harford taking it right inside that circle. So Now, there is a possibility if they go to the shootout and it's uh, still tied at the end of the shootout, this game could end in a tie. It could end in a tie. Normally, I have not seen that happen yeah. lately, but um, normally when you get a 1v1, you do get somebody that's going to be able to score off of it. All of depends on how they move. Of course, we do have a 10 minute overtime period left. And yes. again, with seven on seven, uh, the chances of scoring are much greater than with 11 on 11. So we'll see if one of the other teams can score that all important sudden death goal that would yes. make them the victor here tonight on senior night at North Hartford High School. Yes. What a senior night, one that uh, will not soon be forgotten. No. Either here at North Harford or at C. Milton. Mustangs riding the crest of a six game winning streak, five and oh in the division. Uh, North Harford five and seven, they lost games early. They lost their last game to Delaney. Uh, so they would love nothing better than to win this, go to four and one in the division. Yes. Delaney is a tough team. Oh, yeah. and one thing with Delaney though, that gives them somewhat of the advantage. Delaney does not have a turf field. Oh. Delaney is all grass and their grass field unfortunately is not in the best shape. But when you're practicing on that kind of field all the time, you expect the bumps yep. and, and the, the jumps of the ball. And it's hard to play on a field like that sometimes if you're used to playing on a rolled grass field like yeah. we have up here for our uh, practice field or a turf field. So it does make a difference. It's Aaron Cowley, the uh, senior 5-2 senior freshman, I should say forward, who are putting the ball in place. So see Milton Wright going from left to right. North Harford taking the ball away. No, just that quickly it stays with C. Milton. Nope, now they give it to North Harford. That's Grace Underwood, number three, who had the ball. Mustangs take it away. That's Aaron Cowley, number nine. Burroughs, 15, who has both of the goals for C. Milton Wright. Talia Ferry. 
Well, she is small but mighty, huh? She is small but mighty. But <laughs> she comes from a, a good stock. Both her mom, uh, her stepmom and dad both play field hockey. They were um, two of the parent volunteers during the fall season um, last year that allowed the, some of the seniors last year to have their senior year by in that rec league that was happening at um, Harford Tech. It's Kaylee Molhausen, number 15, and I don't believe she was in in that she first overtime. She was not in the first overtime. So you're seeing what we talked about to where uh, Coach Harvard has said, let's get some fresh stock in there. Yes. This is Underwood, number three. Talia Ferry. That's, that's Callie. That, that's actually Corinne Sims who has the it ball now. It is number four, you're right. With Harvard's ball in the attack zone. Ooh. And she keeps it in. Yeah. Dangerous. The goalie tried to kick it out, wow. but uh, wasn't able to. Wow. Unfortunately, now Seamount Wright is yep. fortunate the for away. them, unfortunate for North Harvard. Getting the breakaway. Seven on seven again with just six players in the field. That gives you the opportunity to make that breakaway. Here comes North Harford, and a goal for North for C. Milton Wright. Right. It looks like the Mustangs have won it. Have the goalie won it. comes out to try to make the block, and it goes right by Riff Snyder, and C. Milton right Wright has won at 7.46, left in this second overtime. Wow. It was a hard-fought game, but, you know, North Harford has nothing to be uh, sad about coming back in that fourth quarter with those two goals. Here's your replay. Let's see how this occurred. That's Callie. Callie with the shot and makes the goal right past Ref Snyder. And the goal is scored. And you can see how happy she is. Yeah. The entire Mustang team there now remain with that seven game win streak. They remain undefeated in the Chesapeake Division. They win it with a goal by Aaron Callie coming at 746 of the second overtime. Wow, what a game. What a game. So the final score, three to two in overtime. The victory by the C. Milton Wright Mustangs. They go now to eight and two in the year, six and zero oh in the division. North Harford falls to five and eight, and to three and two in the division. You can see how, you know, bitterly disappointed North Harford is, is. But it wasn't a fluke goal. It was not a fluke goal. Callie came in, made a great shot as the goalie came out. She was able to flip it over the goalie's shoulder, I believe. Yes. You know, wow. and unfortunately, at that instance, it's just the goalie and the player at that point because she had gotten through everybody. So it's it's one of those 1v1 situations that would have ended up if this would have been a scoreless 10-minute 10, 10 overtime. So C. Milton Wright, uh, two goalies, two goals by Claire Burrows, and the final decisive goal coming in the overtime by Aaron Cowley, and that's the 3-2. to two. The two goals by North Harford uh, scored in that fourth period, one by Fortune, the other by Sims, uh, as uh, that's that's where we are. Corin Sims, who scored that yes. second goal. Any final thoughts here, Rebecca Smith? I just, uh, I think North Harford doesn't have anything to hang their heads about. It was a hard fought game, and uh, it's sad to uh, not really win on your senior night, but you know what? They played a hard game, and, and good for them. And two and very evenly matched teams. Very evenly matched teams, and, and congratulations to C. Mountain Wright. They had some great plays in there, some beautiful shots, and you know. They walked away with the victory. Well, Rebecca Smith, I certainly ha thank you for being my partner Not here tonight. Not a problem. Thank you. You have uh, kept us uh, informed on the rules of this great game of field hockey. Hope you all have enjoyed it here again from North Harford High School on senior night. C. Milton Wright comes in and wins in the second overtime by a final score of 3-2. to two. So good night, everyone. Enjoy your evening.